Hey, what's up, guys? I think I'm going to tell you guys a little story. And in the immortal words of Slick Rick. And here we go. Kick it. What's up, guys? Um, I think I'm going to tell you guys a little story. It's not my story, but it's a great story nonetheless. Here's how it goes. And here it goes. <laughs> Once upon a time, not long ago. No, it's not, it's not children's story by Slick Rick. Sorry, Slick. Um, okay, about 35 years ago, there was a very intelligent, gifted chemist. His name was Dr. Paris. Dr. Parrish was, I mean, he was clearly a very smart guy, but he was also very inquisitive. He had a lot of thoughts about what if. What if people are the smartest people in the world? What if this, then that, right? So, Dr. Parrish was um, very intelligent, very resourceful, and he was an inventor as well. So he had this company that he created called um, Rensley, uh, the Rensley Company. And that company was commissioned by NASA to increase and accelerate the burn rate of rocket fuel. Because rocket fuel didn't cost like it does now, but, it, oh, but overall it was expensive, right? And when you took a rocket and you sent it off, and this was on the Hercules project, not, not uh, the space shuttle, but it was the Hercules project. And they were trying to find a way to extend the life of rocket fuel as well as increase the burn rate. Right? So, Dr. Paris was commissioned to do that by NASA. Well, he figured it out. <laughs> okay? And he created a solid fuel accelerator and a solid fuel modifier. Put them together and created his product. That product was used by NASA all through the Hercules project and the space shuttle. So they got together and said, okay, so we figure out how to do this for rocket fuel. And since rocket fuel is carbon based, just like gasoline, why can't we use this for um, commercial use instead of just governmental use via NASA? So they did. And that initial project turned into a product that um, trucking companies, industry, used, right? A burn rate accelerator, right? Modifying the burn rate of fuel. So the, the science of it is really complicated, and I'm not a scientist, right? But I understand on the level. And I'm hoping that you do as well as we, as we continue this story. Now... Dr. Parrish went on to continue in his research, making that initial product better and better, okay? Now, fast forward to like 2007, 2008. At that time, a few companies, a couple of which were <clears throat> MLMs, network marketing companies, commissioned Rensley to create a product for them to sell via MLM. And they let one or two of those companies do that. But when that product was too expensive to make money on, really, 
the company tried to reverse engineer the MLM, tried to reverse engineer his product, use cheaper products to create a cheaper product, use cheaper materials to create a cheaper product, that is, and ended up with some nonsense that they were selling people that was smoking mirrors. Now, it worked to a degree, but it was a cheaper product. It was hard to transport. It was inactive. Inert, it was inert, right? So once they figured out that these guys were doing this, they shut them down because they own the patents. So after they shut them down, it was nothing for years, literal years. No, every company that used any kind of fuel accelerator, they knew that it wasn't working well, so they came up with other ways of doing stuff. So then you heard about Slick 50 and all these different kinds of fuel additives, right? Stuff that you add to the fuel, which goes into the engine with detergents and all kinds of junk like that. And they work to a certain degree, but the after effects is worse than the actual quote unquote cure. It's like when you see commercials for a drug and you say, go take Exegarol, right? And then at the end, Exegarol, it may cause internal bleeding and blah, 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 blah. It's worse than the actual shit that you was dealing with, right? So that's the situation that's on the market right now. But with all that said, the fuel additive business is a multi-billion dollar business. So, of course, people are trying to get involved because think about it. In the United States alone, 238.2 million people have driver's license. Now, does that mean all of them are driving? No. But there's 238.2 million people in the United States alone that have driver's license. So let's just extrapolate that to how many people are actually driving every day. I say at least 200 million. All right. Then you take that 200 million and say, how many people actually pay for their own gas? Let's say it's 100 million. You know how big a number that is? It's crazy. So clearly, it's a market. And that market is huge. That market is massive. It's one of the biggest niches you can be in. Right? So, you're going to have people trying to come up with ways to, to capitalize on that market the fuel additive industry. Unfortunately for all those companies, none of them had the original product, which not only was patented and is continually patented, it's the only product that is EPA registered and compliant through the Environmental Protection Agency. That's big. Because that means it doesn't do any harm. Right? According to that agency, this product cannot do harm. And it does not. And that's either to your vehicle or to the environment. They have 100% guaranteed no harm. No way it can, can void your warranty on your engine. It doesn't hurt nothing. Right? And people are serious about that stuff. Some people are more serious about the health of their vehicle than they are about the health of their own body. Right? So for the whole, for solid, solid fuel technology through the 80s and the 90s, the Rinsley company was controlling it. Right? And they still do, really. Right? So then you fast forward and you got a few um, big corporations like Walmart. Right? That are using... Um, the Rinsley Corporation's product for their trucks through their trucking and logistic company. The company that services, creates, and supplies the trucks that move Walmart product around the country. Right? Okay, we're on the same page, right? All right, now, let's continue with the story. So let's fast forward a little bit. And you got some enterprising network marketers, who one of which, Dan, we call him Dan, Dan was in the nutritional market and was trying to find another niche that he could get in that would be as advantageous or better than the, than the nutritional market. Because a lot of people spend a lot of money on nutritional products, whether they work or not. And the, and the, and the hook is, well, it doesn't work quickly. It works, takes time. Okay, well, I got it. No problem. 
right? So you take it based on faith without factual data to substantiate it. But there's millions and millions of dollars made every year through MLM companies, through nutritional products. But Dan found another company that he thought was legit. I'm not going to call their name, but the company itself has a product that starts with a B. And then there's another, there's a couple more companies. One that starts with a G and another starts with an E and, you know, but it doesn't matter what they start with. They're all fraudulent. All right. And enough, and in plenty of time, you'll see them disappear quickly. All right. So, but I digress. So let's move forward. So Dan and a couple of his, you know, trusted people got involved with this company that has a product that starts with a B. There's an MLM attached to it, network marketing, MLM program attached to it. Wasn't the greatest program by any stretch of the imagination. Matter of fact, it's one of those companies that the program is really made for the people who own the business. Because you got to jump through all so many hoops just to get involved, make money, whatever, right? So, one of the people who worked with Dan was a forensic investigator of sorts. Anything he did, he went all in on investigating the company. And when he went into his deep dive, he found that that company that has a product that starts with a B, and the company starts with a B, they had been putting out information about EPA registered and uh, patents and 30 years and all this kind of stuff and found out it all was lies. Now, was it a lie for the truth of what these things did? No, because we've already gone over that. The 30 years, the patents, and the EPA. But they were stealing that information from provisional patents that were grandfathered in from the company in 2008. And even that company in 2008 changed their product. And when they changed their product, all bets are off, right? It's like having a patent for Coca-Cola. Right. And then I make, you know, diet. No, not diet. I come out with um, um, diet right cola. And I try to use Coca-Cola's information and patents and all that stuff for my little product. Right. Or whatever they call, you know, Walmart Coke cola. Right. Whatever Walmart cola is. And they try to use the same patents and everything for Coca-Cola because they're similar. No. <laughs> that's not how it works, right? So they got busted down, right? So let's move forward. And you got a company right now, and you got a few companies right now that are selling these cut rate products, right? They're selling cut rate products, dollar store products, and using the top of the line originator product as their stepping stool to make people see some kind of viability in it. That's wrong. It's illegal, as a matter of fact. And they're being sued as we speak. That's not a story. That's the truth. Right? So, fast forward, Dan and two other people, right, who I've all, of two of the three, I've already met and had conversations with, right? Because the person who brought me to this business was brought by Dan's partner. So it's really close, right? Hold and on. now, a word from our sponsors.
So where was I? Oh yeah, okay, so, so now you got Dan, you got two partners who were all part of this company that begins with a B, selling a fraudulent product that begins with a B, and they realize from their forensic information and investigation that they were literally selling people a fraud. And even though most MLMers would not take the high road on that and tell their people, they did. And they moved all their people over, and here's what they moved themselves over to. The forensic information that they found traces them back to Rensley and a gentleman named Tommy Parrish, the grandson of the 83, now 83-year-old Dr. Parrish. And they had a conversation with them, and they told them, and, and the Parrish family told them, listen, we've dealt with a couple of MLMs and a couple of retailers before, and they all tried to screw us, and they all did all kind of unscrupulous stuff, and we just don't want to deal with that. So Dan and his partners all got together with them and assured them in writing and in verbal um, uh, commitment that they were going to do the right thing. And they're going to create a company with a product from them manufactured by Rensley using the top of the line product, top of the line marketing, and most importantly, a top of the line user-friendly compensation plan. They got the uh, blessings of Dr. Parrish. Now Tommy from Rensley and Dan created the product known as Accelerate. And they lived happily ever after. The end, <laughs> right? So if you want to live happily ever after, I would suggest that you click on the link. Don't buy another gallon of gas until you see this. Okay? With that said, you guys have a good day. And as always in party, me and the Black Widow wish you peace and accelerate.